Hello, welcome back. I'm um, in this video. We're going to go over another application of differentiation. It's called the first derivative test uh, that in fact provides us the relative maximum or minimum values of the function on, on, on certain intervals. And our function now is sine x times cosine x plus 6. And the interval that we're checking for f is 0 and 2 pi. So in the first part of the question, we're going to find open intervals on which the function is increasing or decreasing. That means that we're going to use a test for increasing and decreasing functions, uh, which is in your lecture notes. And then we're going to find the uh, and then we're going to apply the first derivative test to identify all relative extrema. All right, to be able to apply the test for increasing and decreasing functions, so we should probably have uh, critical points found. Well, why don't we go ahead and then find the critical points? So to find critical points, we need f prime. But before I jump into f prime, I want to remind you one nice property here that that's going to ease our job along the way. So we have sine x multiplied by cosine x. Normally, when we take the derivative here, we can just use the product rule. But we have a really nice identity that's in your trigonometry uh, formula card, uh, which is called the double angle uh, identity. So sine x times cosine x is, in fact, 1 half times sine 2x, okay? So instead of dealing with the product sine x cosine x, why don't we have just one sine function and we, we worry about the derivative of that function? In fact, the derivative of that function requires uh, the use of like a chain rule. And if you apply the chain rule to that, so one half times the derivative of the outer function, which is just the derivative of sine, so cosine 2x, and this is multiplied by the derivative of the inner function, which is 2. So as you see, that f prime has a really nice expression, cosine 2x. So the critical points are the points that make uh, f prime either 0 or undefined, but cosine 2x is defined for every single x on the real line. So the only critical point that we can find, or critical points that we can come up with would come out of setting this equation, uh, setting this function to zero. So in the next step, we're going to try to solve uh, cosine 2x equals zero for x. The solutions of cosine 2x equals zero comes out of your calculator. In fact, if you punch in cosine inverse of zero, Well, your calculator is going to provide you pi over 2, but pi over 2 is not the only solution. In fact, adding integer multiples of pi to that would, in fact, provide you all the solutions. So you have multiple solutions here, but we're interested in the interval 0 and 2 pi. So this, this implies that x should be pi over 4 plus n times pi over 2. And n is an integer here again. Okay, So we're in the interval 0 and 2 pi. Why don't we list all the x values? So for, for n equals 0, we have pi over 4. For n equals 1, we have 3 pi over 4. All right, And then when n equals 2, this is 5 pi over 4. And finally, for n equals uh, 3, so it's 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 4, that should be 7 pi over 4. And you can convince yourself that there's no other n that would spit out x that fits in this interval 0 and 2 pi. So we have four critical points. And there is no other critical point because there's no x that makes the, uh, the derivative of the function to be uh, undefined. And here we go, I have four critical numbers from pi over 4 to uh, 7 pi over 4, and 0 and 2 pi are the end points of the interval. So the next thing is to choose your sample points from each sub-interval. Okay, so I got pi over 8, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 15 pi over 8. And again, you can choose some other sample points as long as they belong to those sub-intervals. And in the next step, 
you check the sign of f prime at those sample points. And if, if, if f prime is positive, let's say at pi over eight, then you're gonna put a plus sign. If it's negative, you put a minus sign and you just do it for all sample points. And here we go. So we have plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. So that means f is increasing on this interval and decreasing on this interval, increasing, decreasing, and increasing on this interval. Okay. So what that means is we have increasing and decreasing, uh, increasing on the left of this uh, junction point, which is the critical number, right? And decreasing on the other side, so we should probably have a relative maximum here. And, and decreasing, increasing behavior uh, at this junction point is gonna make this point to be a relative minimum point. And five pi over four is gonna be maximum and seven pi over four is gonna be the relative minimum. And here is the graphical outlook of sine x cosine x plus six. And let's see if we are gonna be able to verify the table in the graph of f. So here we go, first critical point and the left end point, the function is increasing and then decreasing after the junction point. So that means we have a relative maximum here. And then we have decreasing behavior and increasing behavior on the right of uh, three pi over four. On the left, it's decreasing. So this should be a relative minimum. And as well, relative maximum and relative minimum. And at the junction points, as you see, we have horizontal tangent lines because the critical numbers were the numbers that we're making uh, f prime zero, so we had horizontal tangent lines at those points. All right, so our table is verified, and that makes the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video. Bye.